Hello guys, Adam here from Switch Indie Fix and I am bringing you episode 18 of the Switch Indie Fix podcast. It's the first podcast of 2019 and it is a very snowy, almost blizzard-like weather here in Vienna. Uh, nice way to start 2018 off is with a new podcast and with a bit of snow if you ask me. So let's jump into it. Um, as always, we're here to talk about a little bit about the indie news. Uh, not so much again this week uh, because of the Christmas break and the New Year break, but still a little bit to talk about from um, all the indie news on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, plus, we also have questions in our conversation topic, as always. Uh, we're going to talk about quite a few games this week because I've, I've managed to play some over the Christmas break, so I'm looking forward to that. But if you do have any questions that you can think of during the show or, or whenever you, you think of them, please go to switchindiefix.com forward slash SIF podcast and ask your Nintendo or indie game or Switch Indie Fix related questions there. So let's get on straight away with section one, which as always is the news. And uh, this week there are four items on the list, and that's half a baker's dozen. So beep, 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 time for some news. Uh, story number one, and this is going to be our main story, is that Super Rare Games launches Super Rare Club. So if you're not um, familiar with Super Rare Games, they are basically a kind of like copy of limited run games. So they take indie games and they, they produce very uh, limited runs of... Um, physical editions of indie games so i think so far they're on their like fifth or sixth edition they just announced today that you can um pre-order the the adventure pals as a physical edition which i I think is definitely their best game that they've they've produced so far the adventure pals um and yeah so they they produce their games in very limited quantities which obviously makes them very hard to uh get to buy because you know if there's only three thousand games um there's only 3,000 copies available, and then they never, ever make them again. So um, as a kind of solution to this, the, the the creators behind Super Rare Games have launched a Super Rare Club, which is basically a, a membership uh, kind of scheme where you pay £30, well, which covers you up to one year, and you gain very special uh, privileges as a member. So uh, the, the one of the first things you get is that you get access to all products 48 hours before their initial release. So two days before you get put in the you get the option to buy uh, the game before it goes out to the general pre- uh, general pop well, what's the word? general public. Um, you get priority shipping, which means you get your your games quicker. Um, you become part of a discrete mailing list. So I guess they they send you an email um, privately letting you know about their their future plans and maybe what games they're going to release. Uh, you become part of their discreet um, their secret Discord server. Which means that yeah, obviously, if you're part of the Discord server, you can talk to the the owners, maybe to some of the developers of the game, talk to other collectors, other members. Uh, you get un- entered into monthly competitions where you can win signed copies of games. You get a one-time use, twenty-five uh, percent off discount, which you can use on on any purchase, but you can only use it once. And you get premium packaging. So the reason I, I kind of put it in the news is like, yeah, this is definitely newsworthy because I know there's a lot of people that listen to the podcast and and check out the site that are. Um, they are um, physical collector, physical edition collectors. Um, the only problem is, is that this has caused a lot of debate online because it kind of seems to me like a, a, a pay to buy scheme. <clears throat> um, so basically, what that means is that you're paying money to be able to buy the games earlier than everyone else. Uh, so it, it obviously as well gives club members a significant advantage over the general public, public because they get two days um, or forty eight hours worth of of time before everyone else to be able to pre pre order whatever physical game uh, Super Rare Games is making next. Um, plus, the point of Super Rare Games is is to make physical games in limited quantities. So, if three thousand people sign up to the membership scheme and they only make three thousand editions of the game, then are people of the general public really going to get a chance to buy um, to buy these games? Does it mean that we are going to get like kind of like these purchasers signing up for this, paying the thirty pounds, buying all these limited edition games? And then um, you know selling them on eBay for marked up prices. Um, I don't really know. This is just kind of some of the things where I think the Super Rare games they, they they say they're trying to alleviate alleviate the stress of of people pre ordering these games because when the pre orders go up, um, there was there's like reports of them going up and and um, you know people having the game in their basket but actually not not for not them them not being able to fulfill the order so they're trying to do this to give the really diehard fans um a means to buy these games but i think they've kind of overlooked or maybe not even considered some of the downside of it and i think they really need to go back to the drawing board on how they're gonna 
uh, solve this and, and ho hopefully make it a bit better and a bit fairer. Because yeah, like my worry is that, that the general public, like say for me, I, I don't buy physical games at all, really. All my games are digital, especially indie games, because most of them don't have physical editions. And like, for example, the Adventure Pals, it's one, one of the few games I would consider buying physically. Um, but I've already played it, so I, 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 I'm not one of those people that likes looking at physical games on a shelf. Um, the only reason I, I would consider the Adventure Pals is because I really like the artwork, and it, I think that the art does look like a piece of art, so yeah, maybe it would be cool to have or have. But um, yeah, for me, you know, like I, I don't order that many games, so this might be the first Super Rare game I, I buy. And if the membership is already there and I'm not a member, then, you know, it could be the case that I go to buy it and it's already sold out, which is really frustrating and it's just going to put me off ever considering buying games from them again if they're already sold to their to their private members. So, yeah, I'm, I, I put it in because I'm interested to see what you guys think. Uh, I saw some people uh, from the Discord server. They they had some kind of interesting things to say on, on Twitter about it and in Discord. So, uh, yeah, I'm putting it on here as a news um, to, to see what you guys think. So let me know either on Twitter at SwitchIndieFix or come join the Discord server at SwitchIndieFix.com forward slash Discord. And I'm just going to take a drink of my cappuccino. So the second story this week is Downwell gets a release date and the, de the developer of the game quits Nintendo. So this is, a, again, a, a, a newsworthy story. It's more, more for interest than actual news. Um, and by the way, I'm using my, my new mic again this week. Uh, I, I know last week there was kind of like some crackling towards the end of the, the show. Um, I don't know why. I, I think it was because my girlfriend came came in and the mic was picking up her movements and not focusing on my voice. So today she uh, she's she's out. She's not going to be coming back at all. Um, but if you do hear knocks or bangs, then it might be that, um, yeah, I'm, it's my probably my hands. Uh, I'm, I'm going to record the segments separately, listen to them, make sure they sound okay, and then, and then record. So... If there is any problems, I should hopefully spot it before it ruins the whole episode. But uh, yeah, so still kind of ironing out some tweaks with the mic. Again, like it looks very loud, loud, but I think loud is better. Um, so yeah, Devolver Digital confirmed last week that their indie game, uh, their indie gem Downwell is coming to Switch on January 31st. Uh, though that's good news, it also came out this week that Downwell's developer, Ojito Fumoto, will be leaving Nintendo. Uh, via, via his Twitter, Fumoto confirmed he will be leaving Nintendo to pursue being an indie dev again. Uh, yeah, I think this is kind of exciting news. One that Downwell is has got a release date. Um, it's one of the very few indie Japanese, like Japanese indie games, um, which makes it very interesting. If you don't know what it is, it's kind of like an arcade platformer where you are playing. You're playing almost like in tape mode, like vertically, and you are you're a, a guy falling down a well, and you have to direct a guy down the well because if he hits the floor, then he dies, or if he hits an enemy, or like a, an enemy, he dies. So you have to 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 control him falling down the well so he doesn't hit the walls or hit the floor uh, or hit ledges um, and as you fall you get like new items so you might get rocket boots that let you land on an enemy and then, and then fly off again or, or you get like I don't know power ups or whatever and uh, it's also like has like the roguelike procedurally generated level so every level is, is different it's very like monochromatic it's black and white it looks very simple but the gameplay is very addictive um, so yeah if you like those kind of games uh, it's definitely one you should check out if you've not played it before um, but yeah, I think it's exciting that the guy he, uh, Fumoto is leaving uh, Nintendo. I, it kind of signals to me that maybe he's going to be working on a, a new indie game for the Switch because if he has been working for Nintendo the, the last year, I think he said on, on Twitter, then you know hopefully he, he understands the, the hardware uh, extremely well and you know that possibly means that yeah he's definitely going to be his next game will be coming to nintendo switch so that's very exciting for me to get to see um yeah more great indie games coming to the switch another interesting story is that uh is number three dead cells developers say a sequel is unlikely so in an interview with game informer sebastian bernard suggests that motion twins next game will not be a sequel to dead cells or even a platformer or roguelike and so sebastian bernard is one of the, the designers of the game um Bernard went on to say that the team at Motion Twin is looking forward to working on something totally new and would only make a Dead Cell Sweet sequel if they were desperate for cash. So yeah, this uh, kind of shows, again, it's exciting because it's it's going to be interesting to see that team that has kind of perfected, in a way, the action roguelike uh, genre um, tackle something new. And it's really interesting to see what, what they're going to do new, like if... 
if they're going to do something totally different. Um, I think it's exciting that they're not doing a roguelite because I, I kind of feel like now roguelites are very saturated in the indie space. <clears throat> like every game now has some type of procedurally generated effect or or some type of permadeath. Like, it, um, you know, it, it's kind of getting a little bit old. Sorry, I was drinking my coffee. Um, so yeah, it's exciting to see that they uh, they are going to do something new uh, and they're excited to do something new. And uh, I think it also shows how well Dead Cell is sold, that they're kind of signaling that they're, they're not desperate for cash at the minute. They can afford to experiment and to try something different. And maybe even if that new thing is, isn't a success, they know, okay, well, we can fall back on, on a sequel to Dead Cells, make that and still make tons of money. So um, yeah, another interesting story. And the final news story for this week is number four, Feudal Alloy gets a release date. So the new, a new Metroidvania Feudal Alloy gets, has got its Switch release date and it's coming January 17th. Uh, I've actually really been following this game ever since I started uh, Switch Indie Fix, the developer and, and the, the de um, well, the, the developer and, and is just one person. She's called Eva Balikova and uh, her company is called Atu Games. I think it was one of the very first, uh, the very first kind of Twitter sites that I followed. Um, yeah, and it, it, it was mostly because, as usual, because of the art style of the game, I thought it looked really great. Um, I've been following yeah, following it ever since I started Switch Indie Fix, so I'm excited to play it on the Switch. Um, if you don't know what Feudal, Feudal Alloy is, it's a, a Metrovania where you play as a goldfish controlling a robot. Um, it looks very kind of like Dark Souls inspired, like it seems like there's a heavy emphasis on combat in the game. Uh, it looks like there's loads of cool different armor sets to, to find, different weapon sets, uh, like some RPG mechanics in in it, like an inventory system. Um, I think all the art is, is uh, hand-drawn, which is really cool. And I know that she spent uh, a lot of time translating the, the game into lots of different languages. So, you know, if English isn't your first language, there's, I think there's a high chance that it will be in your language. Like, I know that she she did it in German and Japanese and Ukrainian and, like, these really crazy languages. So, um, yeah, this is one of the games that I, I'm really looking forward to. I really hope it does well on the Switch. Um, I'm really excited to play it. And yeah, it comes out in, in what, like two weeks? What's the date today? Did I say it at the beginning? The 4th of January. So yeah, less than two weeks now, two weeks yesterday. Um, and my phone just bleeped, sorry. And uh, yeah, so that's definitely one you guys should watch out for on the Nintendo Switch. Come On the eShop, you can put it in your wish list from January 10th. So next week, um, next Friday. And also that reminds me, uh, I, I made a post yesterday of the best looking indie games coming to the Switch in January. Uh, so if you're looking for something new to buy, maybe you've still got some gift card vouchers left over from Christmas or a little bit of Christmas money left to spend. Um, yeah, check it out at, at switchindiefix.com. Uh, there's like five or six games in there, like, you know, the old... Uh, saying that January is like the time to finish off the games from the year before. There's not really much been released. Is really not true this year, within, especially with indie games. There's uh, so much to play. So yeah, definitely go and check out that post there. And yeah, as usual, well, not as usual, but as recently, that is the end of section one, the new section. Uh, very kind of short, but uh, more of an interesting news news day than a an actual fact news day. Um, there are some like not noteworthy things also. Like I think the game Everything is coming to the Switch um, sometime this month. I think it's January tenth or eleventh. Uh, that's that was released after annoyingly after I made my best games of of January uh, uh, list. So that's another game to to look out for. And uh, yeah, let's just then move on to section number two, which is the conversation portion. And yeah, over Christmas, I don't know what you guys were doing, but I I basically had two well. A week and a half off work so um yeah basically me and my girlfriend we've just been relaxing spending time with family we went to a spa for two days which was really nice and then we went to the mountains in a place called canton which is like a uh, a county you would say in austria um her family went skiing i can't ski so i stayed uh, in like the log cabin kind of thing and played video games um, so yeah, so I've actually got three games to talk about today. The first is Crossing Souls by 4Attic and Devolver Digital. So Crossing Souls, I first heard of it when it very first came to PlayStation 4. Um, it looked really like a, a kind of interesting game. It's like a an action-adventure game set in the 80s. Um, it has like a lot of 80s throwbacks and... Um, 
throwbacks and kind of Easter eggs in it. Um, it looked kind of lighthearted, and um, yeah, I was I was interested for it to come to the Switch. It came to the Switch when it came out. I either I was busy playing something else, or I just didn't have time to review it. Uh, the game was actually on sale for half price off in the the recent festive holiday sale, so I picked it up for seven euros and forty nine cent, and uh, yeah, played it over the well, most of the time when I was in the spa. And yeah, the impressions are it was like. It was an okay game. I, I thought it was kind of split into two different stories, kind of. The first was what I was expecting. It was kind of like this Saturday morning, light-hearted kids cartoon story about these five kids that uh, live in this small town. This weird supernatural event happens in the town. The kids become intertwined with it. Um, very much the, the, by the, the plot from Stand By Me. One of the kids finds a dead body. The kids go... Uh, to search for the dead body there's basically a gang in the town that they find this this special stone in the hand of the dead body there's this gang in town they want the stone they fight over the stone one of the boys actually gets killed um and then from and and that was really what i was expecting from the story like kind of like silly yeah uh there's all these 80s easter eggs thrown in like they they live on like the street uh that et was uh the boy et was like that that house from ET was in it's like the same cul-de-sac street um it's very like earthbound you know the main character runs around town with a a baseball bat the the the, the bad guys like the the first boss is based off prince like the artist prince uh, he's called Quincy Queen like it's very quirky very random very like con- like contemporary in a way um as contemporary as video games get like you know there's there are mo- modern video games but most video games are set in fantasy worlds or sci-fi worlds this is kind of in a contemporary world with like supernatural elements um but then after the boy's death it but kind of becomes more of like uh it's like a coming of age story of one of the the well of the whole group um and the, the game kind of tries to focus tries to get you like emotionally attached to some of these characters but I, f- I felt like the, the writing was so weak in the game that I just really didn't care that much about any of the characters um because yeah spoilers like a few of them die and uh you know they're trying to get like these tear jerk moments out of you or this sense of loss but because the writing was was so bland and and every I feel like every conversation was exactly how you expected the conversation to go. It wasn't surprising. It wasn't different. It wasn't shocking. It was like okay, you know, here's like these five kids. They're all five stereotypes. Like the 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 leader of the group is called Chris. He's like the cool kid with the baseball bat. The, then there's like a computer nerdy guy called Matt. There's a like a, a streetwise brawler guy called Big Joe. Um, uh, there's like this kind of like the the strong female character is there. She's called Charlie and she's like a, a redneck, but like a redneck with heart kind of thing. And then the last one is kind of like the, the mischievous joker uh, called Kevin. And yeah, they, it, it just didn't, the, st- the story just didn't really, uh, didn't really su- surprise me or like offer me that much at all. I was like, it was an okay story. I would have preferred it to be honest if, it stayed as a Saturday morning cartoon. That's kind of what I was expecting. But then when I got this story that was about a love story between two of the characters, there's like Egyptian um, gods intertwined into it uh, and, and like aliens and stuff like that. It, it just it just got a little bit lost. Like it, it, it kind of lost its own plot. It, it didn't know what it wanted to be, which I found quite disappointing. Like I, I really hoped that they were going to focus on the mystery of who this dead person is, why he turned up in their town, why what what the mystery behind this stone is and if they could kind of have made it a bit more spookier and a bit more like of a thriller um but instead it it was kind of just very wishy-washy um and then as well the one thing that really annoyed me about the game was that you have like every camera you can switch between the characters between all five of them they all have like uh, five they have like a unique skill and and they own they have their own weapons um but they all have a stamina bar and like the stamina bar i just think was a complete like oversight almost or or just it was like okay yeah we need to have a stamina bar in the game but we're not really going to design the game for the stamina bar stamina bar um so you know like you'd be fighting and there'd be waves of enemies and then all of a sudden your, your character would be out of breath because he couldn't punch any longer or there would be times where you were doing a level where you had to run away from something and had to do platforming whilst you ran away 
and the character Matt, uh, the computer geek, he has like rocket boots that can go over further gaps. And there'd be times where you'd use him so much that his stamina would run out and then he just wouldn't be able to jump. So he'd either fall to his death or whatever was chasing you would catch you, um, which was really annoying. And then they, the bosses, they all have like their own unique kind of like game mode. So in some of the bosses, one boss is like a Simon Say. So you have to, you know, he does a, a pattern with, with colors and you have to follow the pattern, um, which was fine. And then there's like one where the game turns into a shmup. And then there's another one where it's like a button basher. So like not a rhythm game, but you basically just have to bash a button as fast as you can. And um, they they were all really difficult because the game, none of the game before that was any of those things. So, you know, you uh, one minute you're playing like a 2D platformer with like combat. And then the next you're playing a shmup and like you're just getting killed over and over because you, you're not like warmed up to the game. You're not warmed up to the shmup. So bosses would always take like, like, at least a handful of turns before you could beat them. It was never like, okay, I, I understand. Well, most of the time it was like, okay, I understand what I have to do, but I just haven't got the skill yet to do it. And um, the game itself, it kind of runs long, I think. And when towards the end, when you just want to get finished, I just found these these difficult boss battles really annoying. So yeah, uh, I actually have reviewed the game. The review's going up in a couple of weeks. Um, even next week or the week after, so keep an eye out for it. Uh, I don't want to say the score yet, but as you can tell from my explanation, I, I, I wasn't as as good as I hoped it would be. But um, yeah, so keep an eye out for the Switch Indie Fix review. The next game I want to talk about is Yoku's Island Express. I, I've actually had this game on my, my dashboard for a while. Um, I picked it up in a sale months ago and just never turned it on. And then actually on Christmas Eve, I... I had some free time. My girlfriend and her family were making, preparing the meal we were going to eat. I had some time, so I decided to boot it up. And um, yeah, really glad I did. It's such like a unique, beautiful, creative, uh, and like inventive game where you basically play as like this beetle that is pushing for some reason. I don't know why. It's pushing a ball along on a chain. Like you're attached to the to the ball, um, and the game kind of turns into like a a platformer slash pinball uh, simulator. So, um, and it's also sort of like a Metroidvania, like the map is open from the beginning, but there's only certain so many areas you can get to uh, at certain times. Like you have to unlock upgrades or find items that help you get to new areas. And yeah, it's really just like a joy to kind of go around this beautiful world. It's really interesting world. You, you're playing as like a postman. So you're trying to de- to deliver letters. And as you go along your way, you meet these interesting characters that give you little tasks to do. And the tasks aren't like too much of a chore to do. So most of the time it's like, okay, I need to go from place A to place B. On the way there, you meet uh, someone and he's like, okay, I need you to go to place C. And usually it's so well designed that that it's not so far away that you're like, oh God, no, I don't want to do it. I'll come back and do it later. It's like, oh, you know what? Yeah, I will go and do that now. So you go and do it, you get the reward and you keep carrying on with whatever the main quest is. Um, yeah, really enjoy it. The, the pinball aspect is really fun. Uh, there's also like puzzle aspects to it because each kind of pinball level has like a gate that you have to unlock and, and a lot of it is like play, trying to place the balls where they need to go to unlock the, the gates and stuff like that. Like it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a really cool game really beautiful like has it reminds me the art style reminds me a lot of uh, Ori and the Blind Forest I think it's called ah coffee drink uh, Ori and the Blind Forest yeah really like kind of like watercolor looking like like colors um so yeah it, and uh yeah I've I've seen quite a lot of people have, have actually bought the game on uh over Christmas so if you have yeah please let me know what you, you think of it I think it's really cool um, there's not that much more to say about it, really. I, I, I guess I'm about halfway through. Um, and I think to beat it, it takes about six hours. So, yeah, it's uh, it's been like the game where I've had, if I've had 15 minutes to play something, I load it up because there's so many save points that it's easy to just go on, um, go on, do something quickly, like do one, one pinball kind of uh, puzzle, and then straight afterwards there's a save point. So it's a great game for that. So the final game I've been playing is Bleed 2, and it's part of the Discover Indies event that is running today on Twitter um, via the, that, I don't know, at Indie Chick, 
indie gamer chick <clears throat> and if you don't know what the discover indies like hashtag is it's basically today i think it's the first friday of every month the idea is is that you you go on to whichever game store you play on so for me the eShop, you pick an indie that you don't know anything about and you play it and you basically report back via twitter about the game so you give your honest opinion about how your 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 um your yeah, you like your honest opinion on what the game is. If you think it's good, if you think it's bad, you play, you post some videos, you post some screenshots, and uh, it's it's trying to be like a word of mouth means of of people learning about indie games. So I actually yeah, I picked up Bleed Two last night. It was on sale for half price. I think it was like four euros and fifty cent to to pick up. Um, I the only thing I did know about it was that, that it was short, but I was actually surprised how short it was. So I played it. The game takes like an hour long. It's well, less than an hour to beat it, <clears throat> and it's basically a 2D side-scrolling twin-stick shooter um, where you play as this this here this girl called uh, Wirin, I think she's called. It's spelled W R Y N, and uh, yeah, you you are like the hero of the the Earth. The Earth gets attacked, and then you have to save the Earth. So, like I said, it's a very quick story, very simple story. The gameplay itself is yeah, you use the left stick to move. The right analog stick to aim and then ZR is jump and she can do like a triple jump and ZL is to slow down time and it's basically yeah it's kind of like a run and gun kind of level so you you run through shoot enemies and throughout the level there's like maybe six mini bosses or bosses that you have to beat so a lot of it feels like sometimes feels like a boss rush which I really like um, and yeah I was I was surprised like uh, well, first how short it was, but I'm, I was kind of like, that's cool because now I can review the game and I'm actually going to put the review up on uh, the Nintendo Nomad. Uh, so if you want to see the review of that, put that up on the Nintendo Nomad. That's uh, Chris Unseen's new site. Um, so yeah, I want to spot him there. So I thought I'd offer him the review. Um, and yeah, it's uh, it, it was fun. It, it's, it's like a... I don't know how to explain it. it. It was something different. I didn't really expect to... To like it as much as I did. Uh, the the only problems I really had with it was that the, I hated that the jump was on a trigger button. Like it really just didn't feel um, what's the word? It didn't feel natural to have jump there um, because especially when you have to triple jump because you can't hold down the trigger. You have to like click it. So it felt really weird. I, I felt like the it, the jump should have been on on a face button and the aim and movement should have just been on the left. It kind of like what um, uh, what's it called? what enter the gungeon is like where you, you kind of aim and move with the left with the the left stick i think and shoot and and like the r2 or, or zr is is the trigger i kind of wish it was like that like the trigger was there and then you had your thumb to use a face button because it really did feel uh, unnatural to to kind of have the trigger there um yeah the game itself i played it on normal mode like i said i beat it in an hour um, it's very fair and, and there are lots of um, checkpoints so you know if you come up against a boss usually the boss bosses have at least like three stages and every time you die you you load again from the stage you were so if you're on the final stage of the boss and you die then it, it loads you up with full health from that stage again so um, yeah it's, it's very quick to play through uh, it was very fun to play through I'm excited to, to post my review on Chris's site today I'm excited to tweet about it and um, yeah, it, like I say, it was a shock. Um, I I would I would say though, like if if I paid like ten dollars for it, which I think is is around the asking price, I would have been a bit annoyed for an hour. Um, but getting it for less than five, I was like, yeah, that, you know, that seemed right for for an hour's gameplay. Um, there there are like means to to what's the word? For, to replay it so when you beat the game the first time you unlock new characters you unlock new weapons and you unlock these things called mutations which i think are like uh, factors that affect uh, the gameplay in some ways um so you basically yeah so if you wanted to you could replay the game on hard with a new character with a new weapons and change it up like that if you wanted to or you could add these mutations that add special effects to the game or, or maybe they make you weaker or stronger um, so yeah, so there is some replayability there for the price, but uh, yeah, it was it was a, uh, an interesting game. So and yeah, that's the games I've been playing over Christmas. Uh, I did I don't know if I said in the last episode, but I also bought Into the Breach: Banner Saga 2 in the sale, so uh, I'll be playing them soon. Um, 
as well as I hopefully we'll be getting some codes for some games this month, uh, which I'm really excited to, to check out too. Um, so yeah, this, that's the end of the conversation section. Uh, this section was brought to you by the switchindiefix.com forward slash discord. If you want to join the conversation and talk about all things indie on the Nintendo Switch, come over and join the Nintendo Switch Discord, uh, Nintendo Switch, the Switch Indie Fix Discord. So yeah, if, if you're new, we, we recently got some uh, quite a lot of new followers on Twitter or uh, the, the podcast is doing really well at the moment, like every week we're growing, uh, getting more listeners, which is awesome. So if you are a new listener and you are interested in, in uh, the Nintendo Switch and indie games, I highly suggest you go to the Discord and uh, yeah, come join us, come say hello and yeah, maybe we can play some games together. And finally, this week we have our question section and we have two questions this week. The first one comes from Kool Aid Moonwalk, who is the admin on r slash Nintendo, so Reddit uh, slash Nintendo. And uh, yeah, if you are a Redditor, it's pretty cool um, subreddit to follow for Nintendo Switch content or Nintendo content in general. Uh, there's all sorts there from Pokemon Let's Plays to uh, myself, uh, my podcast and reviews from kind of in-depth looks into Nintendo properties. There's like Fire Emblem Let's Plays. And uh, yeah, there's also a spotlight and I am part of the spotlight this this month, which is really cool, really nice of Kool-Aid to do that. Uh, me and Age of Boredom, both of us. So um, yeah, it's kind of cool to have people focus on our our content this month, which is really nice. And Kool-Aid asks me, what is your favorite boss battle from an indie game, preferably one that's on Nintendo Switch? And um, it's funny that he asked me this because I'm still on and off playing um, Monster Boy on the Switch. And uh, I just had like a really cool boss battle on there. And it's basically you play as, um, you, you fight against a dragon that opens up its mouth. And you, you it's really hard to explain actually now that I think about it. But you, you play as a, a frog character and the frog, the frog has a, like a tongue that it can use to pull levers. And when you pull a lever, it rotates the room on a 90 degree axis. So what you have to do is, as the, the dragon is on the side of the screen, it moves up and down and then it shoots a laser beam. But but before it shoots the laser beam, it opens its mouth. And the idea is, is that you, as a frog, use your tongue, you pull a lever, you rotate the room and you fall into the dragon's mouth before it shoots a laser. And um, usually with games like that, it's like, okay, you fall into the dragon's mouth, you do damage, the dragon spits you out and then you just do the same thing over and over. But what you actually happens is, is you fall into the dragon, the dragon swallows you, and then you're playing inside the dragon's guts. Um, so you basically then uh, are playing as a snake because in Monster Boy, you, you change between these characters. There's a, a pig, a snake, a frog, and a lion, I think, at that point. And then there's also a dragon, which you unlock later. But then you play as the snake and you have to crawl through its its like uh, organs and get to its heart before like uh, like its stomach acid kills you kind of thing. So like it's a really cool like boss battle because at first I was like, you know, I swung in, fell into its mouth, kind of worked out, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do. Um, fell into its mouth and was kind of like, yeah, done. Was waiting for it to spit me back out, kind of looked away from the screen, looked back and I'm like, where am I? Like I had no idea what I was supposed to do. And then the, the, the acid caught me up. The dragon did spit me back out there. And I was like, ah, okay. That's obviously not what I was meant to do. Um, so then you do it again and you do it like three or four times. And then, you know, you beat the you beat the dragon, kill it and blah, 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 blah. But yeah, it's just uh, when when I when I read this question, it was the first thing that came to mind because, um, yeah, it, it was cool to to see like the, the developers of that game have these like creative ideas like, okay how can we make this boss battle a little bit different how can we make it a bit more interesting than other boss battles in this genre um because you know the it's for, the game is very similar to shante half genie hero and the boss battles there you know you just hit them with your with with your hair as much as you can maybe dodge out the way a little bit and uh that's it but the, but monster boy is definitely like such a creative game so much detail in it uh, it looks beautiful and i i really need to finish it um i kind of have hit a wall with it right now um but <clears throat> yeah i'm looking forward to beating it eventually because uh, it is a really awesome game and the final question for this week's podcast is from bastian inuk and he says uh, inky pen a comic book subscription service for the switch is getting is getting released this week so it was released a couple of weeks ago last year well end of last year uh, he wants to review it and was wondering, do you think this fits the Switch? 
So this kind of question falls along the lines of, you know, does the Switch, should the Switch be a gaming device or should it also be like a multimedia device? And we kind of had this conversation about um, about YouTube and, you know, is YouTube the, the kind of crack that breaks the dam for these video streaming services, for these multimedia services? Back then I argued that I think it, YouTube is a bad thing for the Switch and that I don't think anyone was asking for it. Now, however, having experienced YouTube on the Switch, I realise how, like, great it is how you can go from watching in handheld mode to then just put it in the dock and then the same video at the same place in the video is just on the screen i think it's great and i think inky pen yeah I've, I've not tried it myself um i actually read bastion's review um and it got me like interested i'm, I'm not really a comic book guy but i think yeah like why not have it on the switch it's um the, well the first of its kind on the switch so i'm sure it's doing well because of that um, and yeah, it's like another place to have your comics. You can read it in handheld mode. There's like different uh, ways to use it. You can do it like, I think by touching on the screen or you can do it by pressing the button. So you can put it on your TV and you know, have like this really cool looking comic artwork on your TV. Um, um, yeah, I, I think it does fit the Switch. It's the Switch, yeah, I think is becoming so versatile in so many different ways just because of the the ability to take it anywhere you want. And these apps like YouTube and like Netflix and like Inky Pen, if you can download something onto your Switch, then I think it's like, you know, revolutionary how good the Switch is for these kind of things. Uh, like obviously YouTube you can't do, but, and, I, and I'm not, I think Inky Pen you can download comics onto it. Um, but yeah, the, the thing of like, okay, I'm watching something on my TV. I need to leave the house. I can take the switch with me, turn, download a, an episode of, of the switch indie fix podcast onto your, your Nintendo switch, then just turn it back on, on, on the bus or on the train to work or wherever you're going and just continue from there is awesome. And I think, yeah, the same goes for, for a uh, comic book subscription services too. The only, the only thing I'm worried about is like, I don't want to see the, 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 the eShop be overtaken by these apps. Um, because it's already a mess now trying to find stuff. And when you have so many of these apps that are pretty much the same thing over and over again, because you know, there's Inky Pen, next there'll be uh, Comixology come in, and then next it'll be, I don't know, the Crunchyroll comic subscription service, and Netflix, and then Twitch, and then Hulu, well, Hulu's already there, and then, yeah, I don't know, HBO, like all of it all together. Um, unless Nintendo really make like a media tab, it's gonna be so, such a, uh, uh, kind of mess for for finding games on the on the eShop, and uh, yeah, guys, I think that's that's the end of the episode eighteen of the Switch Indie Fix podcast. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, again, like I said, the podcast is doing really well. It keeps growing. Um, new people seem to be listening to it every week. So I want to thank all of you that do listen, do share it, do download it, um, and do review it. Reviewing really helps, uh, especially on Apple Podcasts. So if you are listening on a uh uh what's it called <laughs> an iphone yeah. an iphone it'd be really awesome if you could just go into the apple podcast app and uh give give it a five star review and you know I, i'm not even sure you have to write anything you can just give it five stars but if you'd like to write a little review that's always nice for me to to read um and the reviews yeah i, I think it they work on the, the ranking system of where it ranks compared to other podcasts and it, it's also like a reassuring thing for new listeners to see when they say okay yeah he's got 18 episodes more or less in a you know two to a month for the last however many months and there are some reviews so it is a really cool way to bring uh new people in i really wish some of the other podcast services had the option because um i know some of you listen on pocket Cast and and google play and wherever uh and uh, an annoying little fourth wall thing is that i tried to get the podcast on google play but google play podcast isn't available in austria so that's why it's not on there which is a little bit annoying but um yeah thank you for everyone who listened the podcast will go up on apple podcast spotify uh the youtube version will also be going up as soon as i can after the show uh make sure you review it if you have any questions or feedback or you just want to talk to me about video games or about anything else hit me up on twitter at switch indie fix and on instagram as well if you want to see a bit more of my like personal life uh i'm also switch indie fix on there Oh, don't, really, don't forget to join the Discord server, which is switchindiefix.com forward slash Discord. Um, for more reviews, including my 
upcoming um, Crossing Souls review, go to switchindiefix.com. Don't forget to check out the Nintendo Nomad for my uh, Bleed 2 review. And next week we'll be having our very first guest review on the the website. So uh, keep an eye out for that. But yeah, thanks again for listening, guys. I hope you all have a great weekend and uh, have had a great start of the year. And see you next time.